Welcome back to the adventures of the Storm Kings of the Stormlands. A couple of things to address. It was coming on yesterday's episode, and I can't believe I hadn't talked about this, but of course the end game of, of the Storm Kings, what their ultimate goal is now that we've taken back Stormlands. That was just the first step, obviously. House Durand and gaining the power and retaking their birthright. Got a lot of stuff, stuff to discuss, but first thing I'll point out, I've re-added the patron houses after I accidentally reloaded the wrong save game and broke them all. So we have House Pearl, House Torma, Tor Torlamu, House Voop Voop, and House Zul. All of which I'm sure have some interesting and thorough backstories about why their names are so ridiculous compared to everyone else in the Stormlands. But those are our first of the Stormlands. If you are a patron, let me know about your houses on, on Discord and I'll get those added to the list. We've still got a few more to add as well, but of course, don't have enough Stormlands yet. So, what is the goal for House, uh, House Durandon now? Clearly, we want to go back to being the Storm Kings. We don't bend under any other kings. We don't bend the knee or in any other way. Nor do we call ourselves Lord Paramount. They were always referred to as the Storm Kings of the Stormlands. And that is our goal. To gain our independence. To reform the Storm God religion. So that we can uh, not worship these false and all gods. But instead go back to the old ways of, you know, the things that named the Stormlands what they are. And of course, the reverence of our character, House Durandon's bloodline, descended from the Storm King, of course, the Storm King's daughter, and uh, Doran Godsgrief. That was our goal. However, you know, obviously right now, not really in the position where we need to be, A, talking about that in front of our king, but B, also want to be pursuing that at all. Seeing as we have 17,000 men and our leech has 141,000 men and seven kingdoms at his back, not including our own at that stage, of course, but even then with, with 130,000 men, 120,000 men with ours not included, I think they've still got it. I think they've got a very good advantage there. So actually, the dragon, for what it's worth, might be more important than I was really giving it credit for. Now, I was intending to originally, you know, start playing the, uh, not really the intrigue game, but sort of the, the political game, making alliances with Dawn, who have never liked being under the Iron Throne. They were always allowed to refer themselves as the Prince of Dawn, but since obviously that's, something's gone wrong there, is obviously a revoke royal privilege or something along those lines. But uh, they were always allowed to refer themselves as princes as part of their agreement with Aegon the Conqueror. The Tyrells, I feel like we could probably get those guys on board. And if we do, of course, they did have a huge amount of land, but they've lost a lot. Oh, they're in the middle of a civil war, that's why. Okay, fair enough. The Tyrells have the most men. Highgarden have always had the biggest armies. Then the Westall and the second largest armies. If we can make alliances with those guys, that would be a great way to bring about the end of the Iron Throne. But there's another way we can incorporate... House Valan, Valani, Valane, into things as well. Our, our Asossi Valyrian cousins, our descendants as well, of course, of uh, Doran Godsgrief and the Storm King. They're born of our, like, our aunt's line or something that we've tried to keep going for a long time. These guys, I think, deserve the Iron Throne. They've got that Valyrian callback. They have the control over the dragons that we just simply won't have. Their bloodline, their culture, their religion gives us the ability to control the dragons. And by controlling the dragons, they'll be able to control the kingdoms that we have no interest in. So I think the Stormlands, we should divide the Iron Throne between us, the Stormlands, the Storm Kings, and then, of course, our, our cousins, our relatives, the Valyrian Houses, who, of course, have historically ruled the Iron Throne for hundreds of years. That's the plan. Now, what do we want to take is the real question. I think being the worshippers of the Storm Kings, knowing that the Storm's coming in, obviously, across the Narrow Sea, I think we should grab the King's Lands, the Storm Lands, and Dawn itself. And that should be our little empire. And then they have the West and the North. Uh, House, House Valan can have the West and the North. And they can call out the Iron Throne. Call it whatever the hell they want. But we should also get the Riverlands too. I did forget about that. And the Kingsland, the Riverland, and Dawn. North can go independent. Who really cares about the North at the end of the day? Uh, but we'll start dividing things up between the two houses. Break the Iron Throne permanently. So that this can never happen again. Because if it's two equal forces... One might eventually become larger than the other, but it's going to be a hell of a fight. Obviously a lot different to seven fractured kingdoms versus one incredibly powerful king. We're basically ensuring peace for the for the Storm King and for our people. But that's a long way ahead. That's like future, very future gameplay. That's, that's, that's for the plans that we haven't yet made. So, we've still got to hatch this goddamn dragon. All of that, all of the stuff I've talked about hinges upon this dragon actually going the way we intended it to go. So our last dragon egg. House Valan, of course, still have, have their Dragon Egg, but we've only got this one left. If this fails, my God, is it going to be difficult. It's going to be an uphill battle. And don't get me wrong, even with the Dragon, it's an uphill battle because they have 10 times our men and way more allies and historically, you know, a lot more precedent over these things. So there's no reason people would even follow us if we did become the king or if we did become independent. There's no reason we wouldn't be just a massive target for everybody else anyway. Why wouldn't the Reach come in and start grabbing the Stormlands? Why wouldn't Dawn start grabbing the Dornish marches from us and things like that? We'd have to be very careful about that type of thing. So... 
Last episode, we tried hijacking Old Town because Old Town have, not this guy in particular, um, or the Citadel specifically in Old Town has, of course, loads of knowledge on how to correctly hatch dragon eggs, how to take care of dragons. We've got Blood and Fire there, the big one, gives 300% taming, hatching, and dragon slaying chance. Everything we could ever need to know about dragons is locked up inside the Citadel. We've got two choices. Either A, we try what we did last time when we failed and, and heist the Citadel, try and steal these books for ourselves, the fires of the Freehold, the, the blood of uh, blood and fire and, and, you know, whatever else we've got. What else is there? Do they have anything else? We want to get everything we can in regards to these books, huh? Um, so they're the important ones. There's Dragon Kin, but that doesn't actually teach us anything. Um, what we could do is actually join the Citadel and maybe legitimately learn about dragons. Weird, I know. But if we wanted to steal some books... I feel like a maester has more chance to get away with it. And we're actually part of the alchemist guild, which is more or less a, a rival one, isn't it? At this stage, two different uh, knowledge hoarding groups. I think we'll try our chances at stealing again. I don't think this character is really suited. They probably would decline his application to join the Citadel her at this point. I don't think they'd be too pleased about a guy saying, hey, you know what? Uh, we'd, we'd like to join you for no reason at all. Definitely not going to make away with your books here. Plus, you know, I don't think we've given the Alchemist Guild much of a fair shake at this point. So I'm going to take a look and see if we've got any sites available to grab right now. So if we've got any claims we can press or anything along those lines. So let's take a look at the weak claims. Like I said, we've got to probably check these every episode because we've got some pretty decent places to grab. Don't think you want to go to war with the... Oh, I was going to say the Reach, but hang on. They've only got 4,000 men, so they're in the middle of a major civil war. We could get our vassals some extra land from the Reach. And snipe a lot of this land from under them. And of course, we need to make it independent later on to prevent, you know, exclaves, that type of thing. That'd be kind of interesting. Okay, so we go for the Lord Lordship of Cider Hall, which is in the Reach. Lordship of Pebble for one of our vassals there. Now, the Vale has 13,000 men. And of course, the Vale is famously incredibly difficult to attack because it's all mountains. The area itself is more or less impreg impregnable. So, that would be fairly difficult. We've got another one for Cider Hall. Um, we've got Dr Dark Drell. Oh, yeah, of course, these are all going to be in the same person. Farring Cross, Long Table, Rosewood, Small. So the only one really worth going for is, of course, Cider Hall there. Um, Prince's Pass, interesting. Um, we've got Raylon Birch. Yeah, none of these are looking particularly great, unfortunately. Short of grabbing more land, we do have someone in our court who we could potentially press a Duchy level title for. Let's go back to her very quickly, see what she's got, because that will make a very good political ally. So we've got um, against the Trident, we have Acorn Ridge. Now, how large is that? It's fairly inconvenient. It's very out the way. It's not connected to the Stormlands at all, either. Are we fabricating claims on things? We are. We're still trying to get Stone Dance. So Stone Dance, of course, is one of our holy sites. Now, I should also point out, we can't reform the religion unless we're independent. That's something that we can't do because we'll count as... Unless we somehow manage to get a ridiculous amount of moral authority. But these count as, technically, sites under a different religion. So it's a vassal of another religion there. We're vassals of the Faith of the Seven. We're always going to be vassals under the Faith of the Seven until we get independence. There's no way he's going to convert to Stormgirl. Let's put it that way. Um, wait, Weeping Town is not held by a member of the... Oh, it's not. We should go out of our way, seeing as we already control Cape Wrath. We should go out of our way to uh, really reclaim these and get that holy site back under our control. So I think it's time to go back to inciting revolts. It's time to be playing a little bit more of the underground intrigue game here to uh, to start reforming the, the godly nature of the Storm Faith. And luckily, the people are up for it as well, right? It's 110% plot power. We can send... Ooh, the Lady of Weaver Town is also interested in it. What have we got in terms of plot power? That's actually everybody. You know what, we're getting very lucky. Oh, you know what, there's Oris as well. Oris is 12%. I'm happy to bribe anyone over 10% because they actually make a measurable dis difference unless you're, like, really desperate for for the war goals. Do we want to hire an alchemist? Now, we don't really have the gold for it, do we? Um, I think still dealing with wealth is something we need to focus on quite heavily. We're making 6.47 gold per month, which in terms of, you know, base game CK2, just being a, a feudal ruler is, is very good. And I think in terms of the Game of Thrones one, it's also fairly good as well. We've got a decent and okay Lord Treasurer, competent. Uh, he's also obviously collecting taxes, giving us that little bonus. And I think we actually took the business focus, didn't we? So hopefully we can see what Debase the Mints has in store for us. Game 15 piety, thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see what that has in store for us in regards to, you know, as I've said before, the monthly balance affects how much we can debase. Fingers crossed we've got enough to get the 100 gold per go, and that will in turn allow us to build things up more and more. Turn, turn Storm's End into the actual city. It would take a Durandan, I think, to turn Storm's End into something great. The Baratheons have really just been resting on their laurels for this one. The fact that it's only bringing in that much gold, and it's been in their family for thousands of years, or our family, and of course theirs by extent thousands of years, not too impressive. Perhaps it could help me increase Lady Paramount Prasanna's opinion on me, so we're still trying to get our wife to like us a little more. Oh, God. I'm not spending money on her. I'm sorry, we can't afford this. Like I said, we need to keep a very close eye on our taxes right now. Especially because, you know, with plotting as well, trying to fabricate these claims, trying to uh, incite revolts, things like that. Put, spend, sending out little sort of feelers of intrigue, right? We do need to be very careful about that. Some of the mob, he may 
offer to uh, bribe us to prevent us burning that down. That'd be a nice 100 gold as well. A small kitty is demanding your attention. Do you think House Doranin would care about cats too much? I mean, why not? He's not, he's not, he's kind, he's diligent, he's a family person, trusting. I think he seems like a fairly, he's a jovial man, isn't he? Yeah, jovial patriarch. Allow the kitten to follow us home. It gives us health plus one as well. Plus, it'll help cancel out wounded and uh, anything to do with the, the fatness, you know, the, the coronary artery disease. What would you like to name your cat? Coins. That's a cool name. Uh, we're going to call you Fury. As in, ours is the Fury. <laughs> this is my cute cat. His name is Fury. Welcome. The mob gathered your trade post and burnt it to the ground. 30 prestige. I was kind of hoping he would offer to... Uh, I was kind of hoping he would offer to, you know, affect that or, or give us some gold in return. It doesn't say... Oh, name Fury. There we go. I thought it would add it to our treasury, as some other mods do. But no, that's that's kind of nice. I, I, I hate... Because I know some of the events associated with around the pets in CK2. It's specifically going to say, like... It's obviously harder if you name the goddamn thing, right? There are certain pretty meager events, pretty pretty macabre events associated with animals in this game. So that's going to be fairly sad when that happens. Look around Boris. The ram is in a state of war. Who is it? Um, the Drown God Uprising. Our mortal enemies. We're, of course, worshippers of the Storm God, enemy of the Drown God. We're not the Storm God, but we're not the, the Iron Island variant of it. But it's the same God at the end of the day. To defend my liege is my duty, and it's ten opinion. We don't have to help out at all. Oh, we actually dislike this a lot. Um... I think it's time to maybe start working on the king again, because there's no reason he couldn't say, hey, you're a religious heretic, revoke it. High Lordship of Massey's Hook. Oh my god, that's not just the county, that's the whole goddamn thing. That means another Storm Lord can come into play. Excellent. My lord, I would politely remind you of the gold that we are... <sighs> of course you would ask for that now. Um, if we give her Tudbury Hall, she'll forgive. Who is she? N no. No, she will have her coin in due course. It was, it was tempting, I will admit, but we want this to obviously give the land away to another Stormlord. We could potentially get two more Stormlords this episode. Get rid of this one. I mean, we can already set one up here anyway, because we control most of Cape Wrath. I want to get rid of this first. Apparently, the Iron Islanders have taken Wailing Keep. Rothgar Greyjoy? What the hell? Let's not get too carried away with things, then. Let's use the distraction that the Greyjoys have given us here to actually take advantage of that new territory that essentially... Uh, we've gained a claim on. The only downside is, I don't think we can actually declare war on him. No, we absolutely can't while we're in separate, uh, while, while we're all separated like this, while we're in the Mega Wall. That's the downside to being a High Lord, is that obviously we separate off to form our own kingdom to be able to control our own troops during the warfare. I will admit, it is a lot more fun playing the Iron Throne. Obviously, in base game, so you can see one of the big issues you have is when you're an Empire, whenever you go to war, you have to manage troops from, let's say you play as Rome, you have to manage troops from, like, Persia all the way up to the UK, right? It's it's a huge area if you go to war that bi or have an empire that big, obviously. Um, it, it's a huge amount of troops that you're expected to manage. That's one thing I do really love about the Iron Throne mechanics is they all split off and all the vassals control their own troops and they're unified in the gold and they join in as allies because it adds a lot to the ability to break away, adds to the intrigue as well and the uh, sort of other conflicts that can arise between these no longer technically unified factions. It's, it's a very cool mechanic. The downside to that is, though, because we're a High Lord, we now can't declare war for... Uh, uh, stone dance because obviously we count as separate vassals or this counts as a separate nation which we're allied with so we're gonna have to wait for that to end that's a real shame but it will hopefully kill off some of the troops or or to be fair they don't have any anyway and they're not committing any troops we're not going to either let's be honest we're, i'm not going to send my troops over to the Greyjoys. i mean i think call me call me mad on this one i'm pretty sure that he can deal with some drown god upstarts Interestingly, we've got a faction demand here. Osmond Wessington, Wensington for the Stormland. So here's a descendant of, a very, very distant descendant of uh, Arian Baratheon. Now, one thing we should probably do is go out of our way to plot and kill off any of these subhouses, anyone else who has claims on our title. That's going to be a lot of people. That's like a huge, huge amount of people. If we specifically try and do this as a long-term task in the background, I think it might help with the stability to some extent. So obviously we've got to worry about things like this now. We've got Patrice for the Stormlands, whoever the hell Patrice... Another Wensington. We've got Sasamion for the... Sasamion Baratheon, who is the Lordship of Breakstone. Oh man, there are still... There are landed Baratheons. Man, that could cause some issues. So we definitely should go out of our way to ensure that these guys aren't particularly powerful. Just keeping an eye on the factions, of course, will obviously help out a lot too. So, um... How are we going to deal with this? So is this one in? A, this is within our realm. This is our vassal plotting against us. Could we imprison her? We could potentially plot to incite to revolt, though. Only 23%, so she's well-liked. This could be more of a tricky one. She does 40 in Intrigue, too. Um, we'll worry about that later. We haven't exactly got the gold to do absolutely anything at all right now. Now, the other thing as well, we've just been asked by the Alchemist Guild to build a laboratory. I'm actually just going to go ahead and cancel it, because, of course, we can't afford it. We're going to have to wait for the business folks to start paying off a little bit. But then, we've got enough gold. 
We'll make sure that we're not in debt, ready to declare this war. And that gives us everything we need for our religious reformation. And there we go, right on cue, they managed to tidy that one up. Not much of a surprise there, and fingers crossed that will bring the round back together. Okay, nice. So now we can actually declare war, because of course we are fellow vassals under the same kingdom. Claim Massey's Hook, not only is that going to give us a duchy, which in some will allow us to set up another storm lord, as I said before. It's our last holy site, so this sounds... Or, or the last holy site we need, I should say, to allow us to make the storm god religion now. We might need to take all five holy sites. Fortunately, one of which is King's Landing, but it's not without the round's possibility if we have a dragon and a decent amount of other backers willing to do that. My only concern is that we need someone to install on the Iron Throne. Or more specifically, we'll need a claim on the Iron Throne ourselves, apparently becoming a Dragon Rider, as you guys have said in the comments, you've confirmed that that's essentially the case. Any Dragon Rider gets a claim on the Iron Throne if they're within Westeros. Oh, he's demanding a stand down. He has no legal right to demand it, though, as we've talked about previously. Now, we have been endearing him, and thank God that we have, otherwise we'd be in serious trouble here. Um, could we, have we got, like, an artifact we could throw at him? We could send him a Dragon Skull for 47 opinion. That's a Skull of Heartfire, I wouldn't do that. That would, that's, that's a, that's a House to Random treasure. We can ignore it. We can say no. Again, he has no legal right to demand this. He's already a tyrant, so we wouldn't risk doing anything that would give him, you know, tyranny. He wouldn't risk throwing us in prison because, again, he has no legal right. Let's just stick with it. Let's roll with it. It's going to annoy him a little bit more. So actually, what might be a good idea, too, now that we've obviously got that claim, I would say perform either perform statecraft, which is good just to... I'm going to do that quickly to hopefully get rid of some of these factions. More importantly... Maybe sending her over to improve Diplo relations with King's Landing. Because I am going to keep fabricating claims on the King's Land. These are other vassals that we can very, very quickly grab up. So next we go for uh, the Kingswood there. Chittering Brook and the around areas. We'll go for these other separate counts. Again, they count at the same level as us. They're one level below the King. So are we. So we can grab these guys without any sort of hassle, really. What's the point? Let's deal with this war. Then we also need to go and steal some books from the Citadel. Um, I'm not really sure how we're going to do it. Short of just keep going for the... No. Oh, God. No pressure, huh? Anessa Volani, our subject, our, like, grand niece or something like that. Um, our cousin's daughter and, of course, very close relative of House Durandon there. Failed. Another dragon egg lost. Let's call her a fool. Goddamn fool. So, we are really in trouble now. The final dragon egg. Heartfire's dragon egg. Now, don't get me wrong. There are further ways to get dragon eggs. It doesn't really sue... Us, you know, obviously, I don't know whether the Storm God has any relative to the dragon. Maybe, maybe they do. Maybe because dragons ride on the winds. I don't know. Some, there's got to be some, some way we could tie all this together, huh? But there may be other ways to get dragon eggs. But we, we won't talk about that too much because it's also very expensive. Since I'm a diligent person, I make sure that everything is as good as it can be when it comes to fighting men. I can focus on one of two things. We get uh, diligent leech, giving us castle level size plus 20%, 25% for the next five years, which is quite good. Or morale of armies. I would prefer more soldiers. I think our morale is going to be fairly high anyway, as long as we've got good commanders and obviously don't horribly mismanage the realm or have crappy marshals or anything to lower the morale. The other thing, maesters can actually play a big part in that. They can, um, let's take a look here. Stress from war, they get 6.4%, which is quite significant. Uh, this guy could basically stress out our troops, which also lowers their morale as well. But as long as we've got a good marshal and we're a good leader and we've got good commanders and all of that nonsense, we should be okay. I don't think we've got much to worry about there. Are we a good commander? No, we've got three. So I'm actually going to forbid us from leading troops because we are garbage. We, we are just the lowest tier commander I've ever seen. Right, where, where is the button in this game? Um, where is that? There we go. I'm, I'm playing like four different mods or, or, you know, three different mods in the base game as well. All, all with different interfaces. Still throwing me off. Heathens attacked me when I tried to spread the word of the storm god. I barely escaped with my life and I am now severely wounded. Your humble priest. How dare they? Um, how's he doing, by the way? We're not... The religion's not taken off, I will admit. Oh, man. One actually did, though. Thornton. Look at that. The gods of the storm. This is all drowned gods, so don't worry about that one. Excellent. Wow, I'm really surprised that worked. Holy shit. Wow. So we've got one actual province, and, and fingers crossed that will spread from there, or fingers crossed and the more that we do this, the more that we ensure that we've got strong God vassals. More chance we've got of this happening. Can't believe our priest has been so garbage. Can we sack you for someone else? What is that? Oh, Justitia. Authority on the laws of the realm. Is it that because they've been a Justitia before? Have they got that trait via... Oh, I bet it's from the Citadel, right? Or, or something related to that. Anyway, um, I'd like to hire then. If we got enough money? Absolutely not. Does this say I'd like to hire us a new priest? Uh, just because this guy is garbage, but it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, right, let's merge these troops together. I think we'll go for that army, but we might as well just go for the capital, right? This is this is way too out of hand. Trying to siege province after province, and this should be enough, I think. 75% war score, and that should be that. And we got him in battle anyway. Nice, we actually managed to capture him. Thank you. So he is now our vassal. He can swear fealty for me, or we'll take it for ourselves. Um, 
Well, I think we, we want to dish it out anyway. Or it would give us a 10 opinion with everybody. Or we could just take it for ourselves. Thank you. No, we'll, we'll keep that one. I'd love to get Stone Dance so that, like I said, we can set up a new vassal here. Um, plot to rescue from prison. Is he not in... Wait, what? Oh, he wasn't imprisoned by us. One of our vassal's troops, like, subunits must have captured him. Okay, very annoying. Um, so now we need to incite one of these guys to revolt so that we can actually dish out this land, like I said. And it's the Duchy of Stone Arts, seriously, or Duchy of Massey's Hook, Siri. It's only two provinces. Wow, okay. Um, I guess we'll just wait. Your Bannerman Massey has been captured by Lord Alice Musgrove. Yeah, we know. It was kind of at our behest. Our son's becoming proud. Proud hail. Good God. And then Anissa Villani, the, the dragon failure. She is wrath, though, which I think did lower the chance, didn't it? But she's got Valyrian. It's not much. Minus 25% compared to the plus 400% from that one and plus 400% from that one. Plus 100% from that one, sorry. It's fairly impressive. Lord Breeze is getting married. My half-brother. Okay, thank God. Jesus, I thought we'd uh, thought we'd just seriously mess something up there, married off our heir or something to her so that we would get a game over. That would not be ideal. So our son and heir, Hale, is actually coming out pretty decently. It's going to be an incredible diplomat, if nothing else. Curious is obviously very good. Can become shrewd. Ooh, his stats are a bit rough. He's got all the traits that would make him an okay diplomat. Affectionate, curious, conscientious, becomes diligent, honorable, or temperate. Obviously, any of those would be fine. Affectionate, kind, contrust, kind, contrusting. Wow. Content, trusting, or family person. Kind or family person. Again, good for diplomacy. Curious if it becomes shrewd would be uh, just insanely good. And we're also friends with him now, which is pretty good. He's not doing as well as I was hoping. Did we spend money on his education? We absolutely did if he's got a base of six. Man, that's a shame. Um, and we are we are still training him and everything. Training children, serving court. Yeah, we're just getting very, very unlucky with education, unfortunately. So one of the reasons to stay in part of the Alchemist Guild that I talked about very briefly last episode is that it will give us the opportunity to make a little bit more money by creating the fake valuables. It allows us to churn out gems, jewelry, that type of thing. Uh, we can also make some fake gold, but that actually has more of a tax impact uh, because you're basically ruining the economy. We only need now to learn the secrets of wildfire. So either way, we're going to have some pretty powerful siege weapons if we don't get a dragon, that is. Ooh, 50-50 on the rebellion. Go for it. Shit, we failed. Dishonor minus 10. Well, at least we're smoothing over our reputation, huh? And I assume the plot is more automatically cancelled. Yeah, that's a shame that you can't just carry on. Should be an option like, hey, carry on with my plot or, or automatically select for the plot to restart on failure. That'd be kind of nice. Anyway, 101%. Oh, God, is that it? Okay, we can, we can send a gift to, like... Some of our vassals, good god. Um, make him master of the horse? What about now? You wanna, you wanna join? No. Um, what if we make you... Oh, we can't really do much else. We need gold. Gold is the answer to everything. We just need more gold for everything we're trying to do. Gotta learn how to make wildfire. The second we can do that, we can, again, start ranking up, making those valuables, and that should give us a way in. So speaking of a way in, and finding a way in, why don't we try and rob the citadel again? How long until we can steal artifact? Um... It just says, unfortunately, you must not have attempted to steal one in the past five years. Man, surely that was ages ago, huh? We're dishonorable minus 20 now. We need to be so careful with how we're doing this. Um, there isn't a way to find out. What I might do is enable it so that we can see when we last tried to steal an artifact. So we don't have to do this guessing game anymore. But I will take a look back and see when it was we tried to steal those books. Prez Har Harza is pregnant. Nice. Okay, so I did just take a look quickly. And it was roughly four years ago now. So, in theory... Maybe around this time next year, we should be able to launch yet another another raid. Another another grand vault bust on the Citadel there. The wench who I took my lords right upon all those years ago is right at the gate bearing a young child who claims is mine. Oh, God. Um, she should be honored. I should adopt the child into my household. Uh, angering my wife. He's going to be our Jon Snow. A man named Orson. I feel like we should do it. I feel like it's the honorable thing to do. And he is, as, as we see here, jovial patriarch. He's a diligent man, trusting he's a family person. How could he turn his back on his young son, Orson Storm? Incredible name. Orson Storm as well, for the gods of the Storm, Stormlander. I mean, I know that all bastards in the Stormlands are called Storm. I've, I've read the books. So, that's kind of cool. I mean, Orson Storm is a great name. Is it, can we rename him? Oh, we can. Nice. Orson Storm. Um, let's go for everyone's favorite weather problem, Sharknado Storm. Sharknado Storm is a fantastic name, and that way he sticks out a bit more as the bastard. It's, it's an Essossi name. You might not have heard of it. I know it sounds weird to the Lords of Westeros. It's a, it's a name encouraged by uh, the Farlands, a, a, a book or a play from the Farlands. My acquaintance, Lady Paramount, Tyene Martell has had Lady Valena Torland of Ghost Hill arrested. Why do we care? Why are you telling us that? It doesn't matter. Lord... <laughs> He's slipping a note through the bars or something. Lord and Patron Lord... 
Paramount Boris. What an incredible title. Storm's End has no true abode fit for the purpose of the Guild and Alchemist. Therefore, we would like to have a Guild Hall built in Storm's End. This will allow Alchemists to live in, obviously, Storm's End and perform their experiments. But also, I believe it is the stepping stone to learning how to build Wildfire. How much does that cost? Build Alchemist Guild. $300, Edus. Um, wow, that's seriously bad. I mean, we're just going to have to hope we get lucky, I guess, with debasing the mints or something or collecting taxes. I don't know how else we're going to do this. This is horrible. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going crazy. It's when they turn 12 that you pick their... Oh, so all of his points. So, basically, when children are educated, they will randomly yearly get a, a stat bonus, essentially, or, or get an extra point in one of their stats. We've been very unlucky that our kids start off with seven base learning. That's insane compared to his, I mean, his diplomacy, which is a base of one. Martial base four is pretty good. Intrigue base five. So actually his intrigue is fairly high as well. I can't believe his learning is the highest stat. He will make for a good maester. If we, you know, what? I'm not going to risk catching this dragon. Egg. It's the final dragon egg of House Duran and one of the last dragon eggs in the world. Why would we risk it? Why do what our father did and just leap into the fire and lose it all? This kid could learn everything. I mean, he genuinely has such high learning. He would make his way through the Citadel, become incredibly skilled, and then he could be the one to bring about the dragon hatching. Of course, we will bankrupt ourselves, giving him another plus four. Absolutely, just insanely learned. Like I said, this is great, though, because the learning stat in the Game of Thrones mod affects how well their learning is. And he is good at diplomacy. I thought so. Yeah, let's go for that, then. So he's got affectionate curious, both of which are incredible, and, of course, conscientious as well. If he becomes shrewd, and then... I mean, best case scenario here. So let, let's look at this. Shrewd. Diligent would also be very good, but shrewd is the best case scenario, plus uh, kind or family person. Both I'd like the same, but kind of kind I think would be slightly bad, except it gives a diplomacy bonus. Shrewd, kind, and from this one we can get diligent or honorable. Honorable used to be disgustingly powerful in the Game of Thrones, so it was like a plus 25 general opinion. I believe since then it's been nerfed quite heavily. Um, so our wife is honorable. It is a plus 10, plus 15 liege opinion as well. So actually for the time being, it would be very, very nice. He wants to be designated regent. Now I was going to throw that at somebody who... Uh, um, maybe wanted to join our plot. Unfortunately, that's not the case at all. So, the Lord of the Weeping Tower died of cancer at the age of 68. Lived a long and happy life. Unfortunately, now his daughter is in charge and nobody wants to rebel against her, despite the fact that she is a little bit deceitful, stubborn, cruel, shy. But she's brave. Um, she also wants to replace him with a spy master. She wants to become a spy master and she's got intrigue focus. That's a big issue there. With this guy, we might want to do a bit more of the shadowy behind-the-scenes stuff then and, and, and still do what our father did, except not waste the dragon egg, and, and keep establishing... Obviously, we've expanded the realm quite heavily too, but keep establishing the Storm Lords as a dominant force in Storm's End. Someone's born named Monsoon. Nice. Uh, we don't already have a Monsoon, do we? Hail, Sleet, Nimbus, Gust, Sharknado, Monsoon. Nope. Absolutely welcome, Monsoon Durandon. Um, not that we really care too much about him, I guess. Have five children. Why are we even... Was that genuinely my ambition? Okay. We could go for Groom and Air, which I think would have been better anyway. But, uh, oh, that lets him introduce this to Realm. Yeah, we should definitely do that one for Boris then. Um, what's he got going for him? Nothing. Let's go for pff, Thrift, Juicy, Pride, Struggle, Etiquette, Humility. Let's go for Thrift then for you. Another garbage son to put with my other garbage sons. No pressure, Hale. Oh, I think I called him Boris. Sorry, Hale. I do remember your name, my loving son. What are other kids coming out like? Gust? Terrible, because I keep not educating them. Um, let's educate Gust ourselves, then, because apparently we're not a terrible... I mean, we're not an awful educator. We're not, pr you know, particularly good either. Um, if we've got someone who's perhaps... Let me try that again. Hang on. If we've got someone who's diligent and... Fuck's sake, I want to clear that off entirely. Thank you. Hang on. Let me start that again. They generally always give you the best uh, educators at the top, so someone who is diligent or... No, I've ruined it now. Um, right, so what have we got in terms of... Look for someone who's diligent. She's pretty good. Simona. Gregarious, diligent, kind. Those are very nice. Of course, we're looking for anybody who's diligent and patient. His mother is obviously actually very, very good. She'll do it for a good educator. Why the hell not? Don't teach me about your weird harpy. Good God. Keep that to yourself. That took a very long time. Huh? That was actually from our last raid on the Citadel. It took, what, five years? That actually might be the time that we can go off raiding again. That took a very long time. Wow. Okay. Can we steal Artifact? No, we still can't. Within five years. What? But hang on. This video started in... Was it... Well, hang on. I've got to double check this now. You're you blowing my mind. Okay, sure. So so we started this one 83, 72. So it could be either this year or next. Because obviously we uh, had a little bit of time after the raid as well. So it should be any time within this year or next year. Oh, it's the 12th moon. That's why. Um, any time within sort of this year now that we should be able to go and try and steal that book. Just trying to do anything for this goddamn dragon at this point. 
And unfortunately, Boris's plotting is also dead in the water as well, considering he's uh, an incredibly dishonorable man. He caught too many times, so now we're going to have to wait a few years for that to... Ooh, wow. Okay, by the merchant ship. Let's get ourselves into a bit of debt, because this is going to be pretty nice. I think we've got high enough diplomacy to be able to talk our way out of taking the priests with us. And I don't want to risk this one going horribly wrong, but I think, like I said, we've got high enough to hopefully make that not so much of a problem. Dozen strong horses for... Where are we going to? Cohort. Okay. Dozen strong horses for Cohort. And let's see what they've got for us. We need the tax bonuses. Uh, and obviously the box of cash would be very nice as well. Might give us enough to build our Alchemist Guild. I don't think it will. We're only getting 5.81 gold per month, so I don't think it will. But it would be very nice. Going to make our vassal angry. This must be stopped. Oh, God. I thought we were... That was good. Okay, I was very worried then, because uh, I thought we had more diplomacy. It must be 15 diplomacy it ticks in at. Come on, then. 162 gold. That's not that's not fantastic, is it? 163.2 gold, sorry. Not fantastic. It's not even it's it's not even a scratch. It's a third of our Alchemist Guild funds that we need. He was doing his duty. But once we built it once, we won't need to worry about it again. So if our future heirs want to be the Alchemist as well to make some money, that is fine. I'll take Greedy if we want. Yes, thank you. I will absolutely have that because that gives us plus 10% tax as well. So we might as well go for that. So we are now at 6.72. Hey, that's pretty good. I'll take it. 40% chance of succeed. So holy shit, the plot actually... Wow, with only 57%. Damn. Another 10 dishonor. Oh, no. Wait, we're, we're at general... Okay, we're at minus 20 again. So I guess it... Oh, nice. Did she actually just immediately tick that down? Okay, so we actually lost 10 anyway. And then we lost another 10 on top. That was very lucky. Holy shit. No bamboozles. I'm glad you did that. Sir Sandor has claimed to know about my attempt to spread the gods of the storm faith. Oh, God. He promises to keep this to himself by promises out of all the factions. Sure. So our opinion of him changes or his opinion of us changes. Of course I'm going to say sure because I don't really care much about the factionalization now anyway. As much as I'd like to join in on that type of thing. Oh, God. This guy hates us. Too many held high lordships. Oh, that's a fair point. Because we're trying to revoke this one, and we don't want to give this one away, because we're only going to have to take it back anyway. Um, shit, I, I really want this one so that we can set up the holy site. It's a little bit annoying, I know. What about stone dances? Also, same story. We might have to worry about this later on. Okay, every, everybody's too annoyed at us. I think we do need to stay, take a step back here for a second, and get ourselves somebody capable of holding... Uh, Cape Wrath. So we're going to set up a new Storm God Vassal here. Let's go ahead and employ a new courtier. We need a, preferably Lord Treasurer, because I'd like some taxes. Stefan. Stefan's terrible. Stefan, you're garbage. Uh, welcome to court, but I mean, I don't think you're going to get any land. Let's put it that way. Let's, let's check the character finder in that case. Either they come in terrible or they generally come in quite good. Um, so let's go for my religion and my court. There's no middle ground is what I was getting at. Ruler, no. Let's sort by stewardship. Harris is the maester. Okay. Um, Jenna men. They're all terrible. Now, this is the issue with being such a limited culture. He's okay. Ugh. Dennis. Oh, he's Durandum, though. Okay. This is not ideal. We're going to have to wait to employ someone else. Round two. Lord Treasurer. Donnell. Oh, he's, he's, be he's better. Okay. Temperate, selfish, kind, just, incompetent steward. He's not the best person, but he's got 13. Here you go. Donnell. You, my friend, get the High Lordship of Cape Wrath, our original starting point. Removing Sir Bronner... Oh, that's not fair. Oh, come on. That's not fair at all. For the love of God. You gave out some land legally, as you should, and now I'm annoyed at you. Great. Um, Chief General. So what is that? That's just a... Uh, what is Chief General? That's just like a, a advisor slot title or something like that. Okay, well, we'll give it to... I don't know. Any, anybody who doesn't completely love us, but should. Lucian, we could give it to Damon Zoll. Let's give it to Damon Zoll. There we go. You, you can have that one. Yeah, they don't have a seat on the council by the looks of it. Um, that's good. Okay. So, some of you are kind of unhappy that granted the lordship of Tudbury Hall to Donald, Donald Cholmond. Oh, great. Okay. I don't care about you, Lord Breeze. Who are you? My half-brother. You don't get a job. Oh, right. He's the one married to Anissa Valan. We do want to land these guys, obviously. That would be kind of a nice place to give them up in the north uh, on the holy site there as well. Okay. It's taken a serious amount of time, but finally we can launch the second... Raid heist of the Citadel. So you want to get the Fires of the Freehold. Or wait, was it Fires of the Freehold or Blood and Fire? I think Blood, Blood, Blood and Fire was the better one. Yeah, it is. It's essentially Fires of the Freehold, but better in every way. Although that gives Valyrian opinion. Oh, I thought it said Vassal opinion. Okay. Let's do it then. Steel Artifact. Blood and Fire. Let's go. Who should be our accomplice? Well, obviously, we are fairly weak in a lot of regards. I think it would probably be safest to go for the full diplomacy route. Try and talk our way into the Citadel library. I think that's better. Let's take our Marshal. Wait, our Marshal is... 20 diplomacy? What is going on with that? That's so strange. Okay. 
Let's see if we can't. Let's see if we can smooth our way past the guards. See if we can uh, convince them to maybe just loan us the books for a while. Even so, we're quite low. 66% of success. Come on. I believe. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Every single fucking time. I hate this game. The guards quickly start surrounding you. Um. 25% chance of successfully escaping, 59% chance of successfully escaping. That one's with wounded. Fight our way out. We did it. Okay. You failed in your heist and suffered the shame. Again, the trait depressed. We just tried to steal a book. I know it's a big, you know, powerful tower, ancient and well guarded and all that garbage. My god. We're, we're trying to steal a book from a library and that, that's it. I failed twice now. Unbelievable. Thank you for watching. This has been a pretty good episode, I think, for, for the realm especially, for our patron houses, for expansion as well. Look at this. We're quite an impressive size uh, high lordship. Now, one of the biggest ones, we've got 20,000 men, which is pretty nuts. Especially because the Stormland really doesn't normally have this many. But we've, of course, taken two big chunks out of the King's Land. Next episode, we'll continue expanding into the King's Land as well. Maybe even go for Summer Hall. I'd love to do, fix all this economy problems we've had. We've been very unlucky with the business focus, but... And hopefully, stealing a book from Old Town as well from the Citadel would be fantastic. That would give us everything we need. Speaking of giving us everything we need, let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who give us everything we need to uh, keep this channel alive and for me not to starve to death. Thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyal, Sidini, Conspiracy, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Fukunda Vasquez, Fungus King, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Surf the Swede, Tom Terror 18, Bacchus Bacchus, and Zazzy 1711 for the support of the levels on Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for having some faith in the channel. And thank Thank you for keeping things going smoothly. And, of course, a shout as well to Asro, Anne in person, Andrew Wilson, Betsmas Max, Sidini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Gray, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lehrer, Israel, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plock, Luan and Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico. Thank you all for your support.